Michigan's knockdown drag out Senate race is contentious, tight, and all over the airwaves. This morning, conversations with both candidates, John James and Gary Peters. Plus, a million Michiganders have already voted more than two weeks before Election Day. We'll break down what it means. Today is Sunday, October 18th, 2020, and this is a special hour long edition of Flashpoint. All right, we're going to start this morning with the Republican challenger for Michigan's seat in the U.S. Senate, and that's John James back with us again on Flashpoint. John James, good to have you back with us. Thanks so much for the time. Hey, great to be back. Looking forward to a great conversation. Well, I want to start, though, with the conversation that we don't get. And I know that for media people like me, this is maybe more important and more of an interest than it is for others. I find it astonishing that here we are this close to the election and we've got no no face to face debates between you and Gary. Pete. In fact, I wanted you both to, 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 to do it here on as a part of Flashpoint. Um, uh -huh. He has offered debates that you haven't wanted and you've offered debates that he hasn't wanted. Why, why can't we get together and have debates? So here's the fact. Senator Peters uh, is, is copping out. I think it's totally disrespectful uh, to, to your viewers and to the people of the state of Michigan uh, that he's refusing to debate on the very same stations that he's spending millions lying about me on. The highest rated stations, WDIV, gets the most viewers, the most eyeballs, the most voters to make their own opinions, and Senator Peters is hiding. Uh, this is the same station that the gubernatorial candidates all debated on. Uh, it's good enough for governor for the people of the state of Michigan. It should be good enough for Senator Peters. I challenge Senator Peters to four debates, uh, one on Fox, one on CNN, one in Detroit, one in Grand Rapids, and, uh, and he came back with public access television. Now, that's great. It's how we did it last time, but these are different times than they were two years ago, and people deserve to see See the leaders who they're going to be uh, who they're going to be voting for, and uh, I think that hiding uh, hiding behind uh, anything, uh, when all I want to do, all I wanted to do was uh, was allow the most number of Michiganders to see this. I, well, I, think I appreciate I appreciate the fondness is, is, I appreciate the mind. fondness for Channel Four, of course. But uh, as the challenger, shouldn't you take what you can get? I mean, the public television debates probably would have been picked up statewide by a lot of other folks, uh, perhaps us included. I would expect. I mean. Shouldn't you, as the challenger, shouldn't you take what you can get? Well, see, here's the thing. This isn't about me. This is about the people of the state of Michigan. This is not about what I should get. It's about what people of the state of Michigan should get, Devin. And on WDIV, which we accepted, on WXYZ, which we accepted, on Wood, which we accepted, we're all rebuffed by Senator Peters because he's not proud of his record. He's an ineffective career politician who's benefiting on the backs of taxpayers. If he were proud of his record, why wouldn't he want everybody to know about it and see it? If, if, if he's telling the truth about me and not lying, then why wouldn't he want the most number of people to see that? He, he's afraid of his record. And quite frankly, he's afraid of me. If he's going to say he's going to stand up for Michigan and he won't even stand but, up next to uh, me on the debate stage, you should seriously question uh, his motivations well, I, and, I, and, uh, and what he's trying to hide. I am going to ask him about uh, the debates later on, but let, let, let's, let's move into, into some issues if we could. And uh, obviously, uh, the health care debate has really shaped a lot about uh, this uh, contest between the two of you. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, I think you have talked about and, and run so many ads talking about wanting to protect people who have pre existing conditions, and yet, you have supported the repeal of the, Ameri of the Affordable Care Act, better known to many as Obamacare. And I think a lot of people have come to understand that those repeal are the same. Repeal and what, David? Repeal and what? Well, we're, repeal well, and well what? that's what I'm going to ask you. Repeal, but what okay. will you replace it with? Republicans have had about 10 years to show us a new health care plan to replace it with. The president has promised one time and time again it hasn't come. And I don't see a, a full health care plan on your website. What do you want to replace it with? So here's the thing, um, I'm not, or I, I'm not uh, a politician. I'm coming into this as somebody who has real world experience. I said, and this is the two year anniversary, Devin, of when I stood up on the debate stage with Senator uh, Stabenow and told her to her face that she was lying about me. I said, Senator, you're fibbing again. I will always vote to protect people with pre-existing conditions. We must have a market-based, patient-centered approach that will do that. And uh, Democrats have ignored that because it gets in the way of their narrative. I believe that creating a system where we have, that we, uh, we make the Affordable Care Act actually affordable by uh, allowing competition 
through tax, tort, and regulatory reform, uh, expanding risk pools across uh, state lines, allowing associations so that people can have more choice. Senator Peters is on a gold-plated, taxpayer-funded plan that we don't have access to, but he gets to uh, benefit. It has different limitations. Deductibles are, are, are such that people are rationing their care and putting themselves at higher risk driving insurance costs up and I would support having a legislative requirement a legislative requirement that protected people with pre-existing conditions Senator Peters has been in Washington for for 12 years he was a part of a unified Congress a Democrat Congress and uh, and a uh, and but, and uh, a Democrat John, White House. John we have uh, we have and, a health people during law. that time said they need to vote for we have a health care law right now that protects people with pre-existing mm -hmm. conditions, and the Republican administration in charge at the moment is trying to. Uh, I'm have not it in the Republican down. administration. I, I understand. I, I understand. I, you, I've always so said. Are you are you arguing now, right now, that you do not believe that it should be repealed? I'm not arguing. I'm saying emphatically that we must not repeal coverage and protections for our seniors and people with pre-existing conditions. But they will continue to lie about my position on it because this is something that's very personal to me. I have people in my family with pre-existing conditions. I will always protect them. My people who I employ who have pre-existing conditions, and I'm paying 85% of their health care uh, premiums through our business to make sure they can continue to maintain this health care, even through a pandemic. Senator Peters is most concerned about staying on his exclusive ACA-exempted plan. It's exempted. And he hid that from media because he knew that it wasn't setting the right example, and he knew that he was getting over on the people of the state of Michigan. I think that's wrong. I believe fair is fair, and I believe that people need to have choice Choices, and they need to make their own choices, uh, and not the federal government insurance companies. In fact, the last time you were uh, on this program, uh, I asked you about hel uh, what kind of a health care model there should be, and you said you saw that it should be sort of like the way that people have a house or that they have a car. That has stuck with me because that would suggest that um, that not everybody should uh, is entitled to the same kind of health care. Is that correct? Am I reading that right? I uh, what I meant by that, and thank you for asking for clarification, Devin, I appreciate that. What I meant from that is the concept of being able to make your own choices. You make your own choices about, the, about uh, what you do with your car. You make your own choices about how you decorate your house or your apartment. What I'm saying is the choices about what you do with your medical decisions should be up to, to you uh, and not up to the federal government or insurance companies. That concept that you should control it, where Senator Peters is saying that Medicare for all, we're probably going to have it in the future, and that's documented, uh, that, that that's the wrong way to go. We need to keep the parts of Obamacare that work and fix the parts that aren't. And Democrats are running on the brokenness rather than focusing on fixing the parts that are broken because uh, health care is unaffordable for too many Americans. And I believe that by increasing competition, uh, increasing choice, increasing quality of care, uh, lowering costs, I think we can do that with some of the ways I proposed. Again, um, broadening the risk pools across state lines and uh, getting regulatory tort and tax reform, uh, allowing associations so people can make their own choice. Those are the types of things through a legislative requirement that must protect pre-existing conditions. And again, this is a two-year anniversary of when I stood on the debate stage and said exactly that, and Senator Pete, I'm sorry, and Senator uh, Peters is ignoring that. But we were also, the, the last cycle around, I, I think you've come off your position then that Obamacare, I believe you described it as a nightmare uh, once upon a time. And I, I don't want to spend too much time, more time on, on health care. We need to move on. And I well, to I, give I you would say that, that if you are paying, if you're paying right now, if, if you're paying $40,000 for your health care and you can't afford your health care, yeah, I'd say it's a nightmare. If you are in a situation where you're having to choose between paying your medical bills or paying for food or rent, I'd say it's a nightmare. Senator Peters is more concerned concerned with winning an election than doing the right thing by his constituents. If he were, he would, he's been in a position to fix it for six years and hasn't. He's been in Washington for 12 years and hasn't. We need to have somebody who understands life in the real world and is dedicated to fixing this problem. Let's move on if we could. I want to let you both do something that sure. I think do doesn't happen enough in political races uh, because these political ads uh, sort of exist in, in many ways in a vacuum. I want to let you both respond to an ad that is being run against you uh, by the other side. Side. Here's an ad that uh, a lot of people have seen and heard all across Michigan. No matter what John James says, his plans are clear to me. 
And me. And me. Because we all have pre-existing conditions. Cancer. Diabetes. Kidney disease. And John James supported a plan allowing insurance companies to discriminate against people with pre-existing conditions. Like, like us. I know John James wants to deny it. But he can't hide his record from us. On health care, John James is wrong for Michigan. SMP is responsible for the content of this ad. Now, I think you've just drilled down quite a bit on explaining why you think all of that is fairly inaccurate, but uh, I, I imagine you've seen this ad plenty, and uh, what do you think every time it runs? I honestly, I, I haven't seen, I actually turned the TV off. Uh, I think the toxicity you're seeing, and I mean, honest, I, gotta, look, I have a family, and, uh, and, and I'm more concerned about what it takes to keep my people employed and, and keep my family whole uh, through this process. Um, we don't need more trauma, we need more leadership. But anyway, directly to your question. Um, thank you for it, actually. But uh, like I said, it's pure unadulterated lies. Getting surrogates um, who, who try to uh, look like the people who they're trying to represent, uh, when in many cases they're paid to uh, play on our emotions uh, when, when those assertions are, are baseless, factless. My record on health care is I have hundreds of people in the city of Detroit who we had to keep on their health care during a pandemic. My record on health care is paying 85% of health care costs for my people. My record on health care is having a son who has pre-existing conditions when I was attacked in another ad for not protecting children with pre-existing conditions. Uh, Democrats are not going to allow uh, uh, the truth to get in the way of their narrative. Well, and I would invite your viewers to think critically and ask yourself, why would somebody who's dedicated his life to service and sacrifice someone who's given over a million dollars to help people who are sick, why would he all of a sudden, after years of saying the same thing and actually calling a, a senator out uh, in a debate, uh, a senator who would actually debate me had the courage to, uh, why would I now all of a sudden uh, begin to hurt people? Or is the career politician who's detached from reality on his gold-plated health care plan saying anything possible to get reelected? Let, I think Michiganders are smart enough to look through the BS. Let's move to the Supreme Court, which is where ultimately the Affordable Care Act could be decided. And of course, uh, it, should mm -hmm. you become a member of the U.S. Senate, you would have a lot to say about uh, members of the Supreme Court. I'm really curious. We we, it used to take a vote of 60 senators to uh, pass the nomination of a Supreme Court justice. Both parties have had mm -hmm. a, a role in breaking that down to where now it's a simple majority and we end up with the kind of a fight that you've seen over Brett Kavanaugh and now over Amy Coney Barrett. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, if you were a part of the party that was in charge and in control of the Senate, would you commit to going back to the 60 vote filibuster uh, available uh, sort of uh, way of nominating a Supreme Court justice, or do you think it ought to stay with this very narrow margin, which just leaves it up to the party in charge and needs no effort across the aisle? Devin, it's so refreshing uh, for me to hear you say what so many people are thinking, that both parties have failed, this two-party system is broken, and politicians continue to say anything that's most convenient in the, morning, in the, in, in the moment uh, to help their re-election chances. Uh, yes, both parties uh, have failed. I would support the Constitution of the United States, and I have sworn an oath to the Constitution, and the Constitution is quite clear. Uh, we need to abide by the, the Constitution and not by political political convenience. Um, I would say that um, we need to go back to a, a nonpartisan way of looking at the Supreme Court justices. And I've said all along, my only litmus test is literacy. My only litmus test is someone who will respect the separation of powers in our federal government. And, and ACA shouldn't be decided at the judicial level. It should be fixed at the legislative level. But Congress, I fear, has given up on legislation. They're looking too much at investigation. And the people of the state of Michigan need people who are focused on getting things fixed back home. I would commit to putting textualists who interpret the law as written and don't try to legislate from the bench. That's my job. That's my job to represent my state, not unelected people who should be held accountable to a process uh, where Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, got 96 votes. 96 votes. It's hard because to imagine. She was highly competent. Uh, right. Hard to imagine these toxic days. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, because she was highly qualified, extremely competent, and I believe that Senator Peters, who opposed 
along party lines, opposed um, Amy Coney Barrett, uh, Judge Amy Coney Barrett, prior to even her, her nomination. I, I think that's part of the problem. We need to evaluate everyone on their merit, and I believe protecting and preserving the Constitution, not your political reelection election should, should Merrick Garland have leaders. been Should Merrick Garland have been measured on his merit rather than not allowed to come to a nomination then? Absolutely. Okay. What's good for I, I the, let me get to good for the I, gander? I appreciate that. I'm, I'm curious uh, with what you've described yourself as pro-life. Uh, Gary Peters uh, has gotten an awful lot of attention over this last week for becoming the first senator to talk about his own experience with a third trimester abortion. I'm curious whether his story uh, makes you rethink your position at all on third trimester abortions, which have become uh, so. Um, hotly and emotionally debated in Washington and across the country? Um, well, I, I'm just going to be frank. There's, uh, there's some things that are above politics. And for Senator Peters to discuss that position uh, took a lot of courage. Uh, and so my heart goes out to, uh, to he and his ex-wife and his family for that heartbreaking experience. Wouldn't wish that on anybody. Yeah. Um, I believe Senator Peters and I agree on one thing uh, with regard to abortion. We must always protect the life of the mother. Um, but I will say another, where we kind of have our, our, our differences. Um, neither Senator Peters nor I are women. We are never, ever going to understand what it's like to be a woman making that tough decision. But I am a Christian. I am a, I'm a sinful man, but I do my very, very best to bring glory to God. Um, to protect life and, and help use my blessings to be a blessing to others so they may live it more abundantly, show uh, Jesus' teachings through my actions. Again, though I do make many mistakes, but Senator Peters and his allies are trying to make me into an extremist when really the Democratic Party used to say abortion should be safe, legal, and rare. Now they're saying to all Americans that abortion should be taxpayer funded up to 40 weeks on demand for any reason. And I think that's moving toward the more extreme position. I believe that if politicians spent more time focused on empowering women rather than the extremes, then it would be a better world for everyone. Uh, yeah. uh, equal pay for women, uh, uh, more adoption options, uh, over-the-counter birth control, uh, better education, better health care for women. These are the types of things that I will commit to working on that Senator Peters is fixated on the on the problem or the issue, and I want to be fixated on the solution. But, so that but, we can but would you can, can we, we can just boil forward. it down to? Or, or would you would you prefer to see Roe versus Wade overturned? I I believe that in in that very tough situation, uh, we need to make sure that. I will always vote to support and protect life, and I want to spend my time and my resources focused on empowering women through health care and better choices and options than just life and death. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure that answers my... <laughs> do you want to see Roe versus Wade overturned? No, I'll, 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 uh, I believe that uh, at the federal level, that's the decision that would be best made uh, uh, by the states. And when you take a look at the state of Michigan, with a, a Democrat female governor, a Democrat uh, female attorney general, uh, I believe that these are decisions that should be made closest uh, to home, not at the federal level. I don't want the right. federal government dictating how we should live our lives. John, I'm afraid that's all the time we have left, and I have so many topics that we did not manage to get to. Uh, I, I will keep holding out hope that perhaps we can get a debate before Election Day for you two. But thanks so much for. The this part of it today and being on Flashpoint. Thank you, my friend. Take care. You bet. All right, that's John James. We come back. We'll talk with the current senator, Gary Peters. This is Flashpoint on Local 4.